In this video, I'll compare two common ways to clean carpets in the home on lots of real world spills and stains. You'll learn the facts about carpet cleaners and the micro sponge dry cleaning method. The two cleaning methods use different principles, so how do they both work? A carpet washer dissolves, dilutes, then extracts sticky grime using water as the main carrier. The detergent in the water helps loosen sticky dirt, which then goes into solution in the water. Then it uses the same principles as dry vacuuming. A strong suction motor reduces pressure, and the pressure difference causes an air current to flow through the carpet pile into the head. This draws away most of the dirty water solution. Each pass repeats this process, gradually diluting the level of dirt in the carpet. Micro sponge dry cleaning works differently. There's no water involved, and the micro sponges are made of an organic fibre that's saturated with powerful but harmless cleaning solvents. As they're scrubbed between the fibres, the solvents dissolve the sticky rime. Because the solvents are delivered with the micro sponges, you automatically avoid overwetting. As the solvents evaporate, any remaining dirt in the solution is siphoned and absorbed back to the same micro sponges. What you're left with is just dry dust that's captured all the dirt from the carpet, which can then be vacuumed away. It leaves no sticky residue, and the micro sponge dust is fully biodegradable and environmentally harmless. To compare these cleaning methods, I use this polypropylene rug. It has a porous backing, which will help illustrate any liquid penetration that occurs. The carpet cleaner chosen was a commercial grade, industry standard Kircher Puzzy 100, and there are plenty of YouTube videos demonstrating it. There are many different brands of hot water extraction carpet cleaner, but they all work on the same basic principle I discussed earlier, and there's no good evidence that one performs significantly better than another. So I simply used the most powerful commercial one I could find. This machine retails for £700 on Amazon as of recording. It sprays cleaning solution onto the carpet and sucks it up into an onboard dirt tank. It has an unimpeded open circuit airflow of 54 litres per second and a high ultimate vacuum strength of 22 kilopascals, which is suction that's comparable to a good vacuum cleaner. By comparison, the Dyson V11 produces about 28 kilopascals of suction. The actual airflow through a given carpet pile will vary depending on the carpet's resistive load, as discussed in the video in the first description link where you can learn more. It guzzles a huge 1250 watts of power, weighs a backbreaking 10.3 kilograms when empty, and twice that when full, and is fairly big and bulky. It's 88 decibels loud when on, and you can hear it throughout the entire house. It's even louder than the ear piercing Kirby vacuum. I used the highest grade, US made Bissell carpet cleaning solution, widely regarded as one of the best cleaning formulas available for carpet cleaners, and it is quite expensive. The micro sponges used were Dyson Zorb, simply because they're the cheapest, although there are plenty of other brands. The pre-spray was also Dyson's Dissolve, because it works really well, is fairly cheap, and lasts ages. The carpet was first prepared with an initial vacuum using a high-end cleaner. Then, two rows of rectangular regions were marked out using masking tape, one for each of the cleaning methods. These will contain the seven different kinds of mess used, representing a typical range you might encounter in the home in normal daily living. First is ketchup. Sticky barbecue sauce. This is a mixture of orange juice and red grape juice, which is much like red wine. This is wet garden mud and soil. Next, we've got black shoe polish. This is homemade curry that's very staining, leaves a very strong smell, and also simulates pet mess or vomit. Finally, and worst of all, is thick, filthy bite chain oil, and easily the hardest thing to get out of a carpet. These are very intense messes, making this a genuine worst case scenario. When such accidents happen in the home, especially with liquid spills, it's important practice to blot out as much of the mess as possible with a dry cloth or tissue. It's really important to do this, because otherwise it can spread during the cleaning process and you work against yourself. It's similar to why you vacuum dust and solid dirt out before carpet cleaning, otherwise you can unintentionally dissolve it back into solution, making a bigger initial mess. Always wipe and blot out as much as you can before cleaning. 
Once the stains were down, they were left for a few hours just to set in. Again, this really is a worst case scenario and very extreme. Normally, responsible people would clean up a stain like this as quickly as possible, especially if there's a lot of liquid involved, to make sure it doesn't soak in deeper down or get through the backing material into the underlay where you'll never be able to reach it. Advanced carpets have waterproof backing preventing this, but this also prevents air getting up through it when vacuuming, meaning you'll need a vacuum cleaner with very strong suction to get the best results. I've covered this in the video in description link too. I use the carpet cleaner first. The Bissell cleaning solution recommends mixing half a capful for every 3.5 litres of water. It also recommends the best cleaning is achieved by doubling this concentration, so I added two full capfuls to 7 litres of hot water. Both the carpet cleaner and the Bissell solution recommend pre-spraying stains and leaving it to soak, which I did. This is supposed to help the solution soften and break down the stain to make it easy to remove. Unfortunately, it also meant all the water soaked through the carpet. Then I clean as instructed, spraying solution and removing it in forward and backward passes, going over the same area as many times as necessary to get the stains out. Again, because this was such an extreme staining situation, I had to go over it dozens of times and over multiple separate cleaning sessions, and it did get quite foamy at times as you can see. I also made sure afterwards that I sucked out as much water and foam as possible until nothing else was being extracted. The carpet was left lightly damp, and the tissue wasn't that wet. If this had been a carpet with non-porous backing, it's unlikely the carpet would have been left as dry because the carpet restricts airflow from underneath, as discussed in the video in the second description link, and can restrict how effectively the water is extracted. Unfortunately, this method of cleaning doesn't control the amount of moisture put into the carpet, and naturally causes overwetting. This meant water, and dirty water at that, had seeped through the pile and even through the backing. If this had been a fitted carpet, that water would have soaked into the underlay and would have been irretrievable by the machine, meaning it stayed wet for a long time. This has major biological implications, as I'll discuss later. You can see the cleaning results here. There was still a bit of light staining from the ketchup and barbecue sauce. The fruit juices and mud were not visible. The curry was also visually gone, but there were still stains from the shoe polish and bike chain oil. What was surprising though, is that you could still smell each of the food based stains, especially the strong ones like the curry. This is despite all that washing, diluting and extracting. It might look fairly clean, but the smells tell a different story. The cleaning formula perfumes masked them a bit, and the Bissell detergent had Febreze in it, but they were still there. This is the dirty water. It's worth pointing out a big myth you see in lots of videos on YouTube. People show really dirty, dark brown water being poured away after big cleaning sessions and use that to suggest this cleaning method is doing a great job. Except it doesn't mean that at all. It just shows you how dirty the carpet was to start with. It says nothing about what was left behind still in there. My results confirm this. You can still smell the food stains in the carpet so they weren't fully removed. Those YouTube videos drawing this wrong conclusion would have to re-clean many times and properly measure residual water dirtiness each time, but they never do. They only ever show you the results after the first clean. Don't be fooled. Anything really dirty will always give off loads of dirt, no matter what method you use to clean it. It's not what's removed that's important, it's what's left behind and not removed that you should care about. Always remember that when watching YouTube videos. Next up is the micro sponge dry cleaning. Before I do this, it's worth explaining how you're supposed to properly clean heavy spot messes like this. This is a separate ketchup stain, the bulk of which has been pre-blotted and allowed to set in. 
Most of this should be blotted out using Dissolve. You spray two or three times to moisten the stain and break it down. What's dissolved should be blotted and wiped away with a dry towel like this. And then you repeat as many times as necessary until the stain is mostly gone. At this stage, you can finish off with some micro sponges. This way, much more intelligently and better controls the amount of moisture you put in the carpet. It dries much faster, and after a 30 minute wait and final vacuum, the carpet is restored back to normal with the stains and smells gone. But just to illustrate the point, you can bulk clean a wider area with a widespread pre-spray and micro sponge salt. This does add more moisture and thus takes longer to dry, but will work. So back to the comparison. Severe stains like this benefit from a light misting of dissolved pre-spray to help break down the stains, similar to the pre-spray with the carpet cleaner. Except this doesn't soak the carpet and is a much more controlled and intelligent approach. You only need a light misting, and more is not better. Then, the micro sponges are sprinkled down. Stains this severe will need several applications, simply because there's so much dirt to remove. These were groomed in, and gradually ate away at the stains. This is a second application, as the chemistry and agitation continue to gradually remove the stains. There are lots of bad YouTube videos out there, spreading the myth that this method is only a carpet freshener, and can't be used to properly deep clean a carpet. They never show any evidence to support this, they do really poor testing, often using the product incorrectly, or they use carpets permanently stained with dyes and inks, which won't be removed by any cleaning method. I've already produced lots of videos on my channel disproving those claims and showing that this deep cleans amazingly well, and they're in description links 3 to 6. A few more applications and enough scrubbing later, and the stains were gone. You can see underneath the carpet that the backing was completely dry using the micro sponges. Again, this method intelligently controls the application of liquid detergent to avoid overwetting. You can see here that the paper towel pressed on the backing material is wet on the carpet washer side, but bone dry on the micro sponge side. While the carpet cleaner had left the top of the carpet fairly dry, the water had soaked through to the backing. It took overnight to dry, and all that time, mould, bacteria, fungus, and possibly mites were growing and hatching in the humid conditions in there, as is known to happen when using water-based cleaning methods, as discussed in Description Link 3. If it had been a deeper pile, or carpet with non-porous backing, preventing as much water from being removed, and if the underlay had got wet, it would have taken much longer to dry. This is why rental companies recommend also renting massive carpet blowers like these, which are noisy and burn through a lot of power, to brute force the carpet dry as quickly as possible, to compensate for the drawbacks of using water. Unfortunately, another big problem with using water became clear. This carpet had completely and permanently warped as it dried after being soaked. So, it's now all bent and wavy, and more difficult to vacuum. On fitted carpet using water-based methods, such warping can cause seam splitting and other related problems, again as discussed in Description Link 3, and this is a good example. Many leading companies, such as Dyson, have always recommended that you should never be wetting carpets for exactly these reasons, and you can see the proof why right here. The micro sponges dried much faster, although because so many were used to remove such unusually intense stains, they did take longer to dry than the usual 30 minutes, because they can clump together if a lot are used, reducing total surface area and evaporation rate. But because the light wetness isn't water and is a solvent, there are no issues with biological nasties, so it's much more hygienic. The final step was to vacuum away the dirty dry sponge dust. 
Again, this was more difficult in this case, because the carpet cleaner had warped the carpet, making the vacuum head bounce. I also noticed the fibres on the carpet cleaner side felt quite crispy, showing there was clearly detergent residue being left behind, even though it wasn't sticky as some can be. The micro sponge side was noticeably softer and silkier in comparison, and was clearly using much better chemistry. There was also no smell in the pile on the micro sponge side other than its perfume, yet I could still smell the food odours on the carpet washer side. All the stains on the micro sponge side were completely gone, including the shoe polish and bike chain oil, proving once and for all that Dyson Zorb and Dissolve are true deep cleaners. They far outperformed a commercial grade industrial carpet washer using the best cleaning formula available for that technology. Micro sponges are fundamentally better technology without any of the disadvantages of the carpet cleaner. Much like the water, which had got a bit dirty, the micro sponges had soaked up all the stains and then became discoloured. I've put some fresh, bright yellow sponges on top to show the difference. To finish off, seeing as the carpet cleaner didn't fully remove all the stains and odours, I decided to go over all regions again with one final micro sponge clean. A quick pre-spray, a handful of micro sponges, a good brush, and a final vacuum after drying left a spotless result and easily got out the stains the carpet cleaner left behind. The carpet was spotless and the smells gone. The only thing I couldn't fix was the warping that the water caused, which is probably permanent physical damage now. It's important to consider a few things when reviewing the pros and cons of these two cleaning methods. The most important are the practicality of using it, how well it cleans, its running costs, and the environmental impact it has. The actual cleaning stage using a carpet cleaner might be a bit quicker than brushing in the micro sponges and vacuuming up afterwards. But the total time to set up, disassemble and put away, and the drying time more than offsets that. It took far longer and more effort to use a carpet cleaner from start to finish and get a dry clean carpet, even though I wouldn't have thought so before I used one. It's too easy to only think of the cleaning process and forget about all the setup and messing around. The carpet cleaner is more effort to manage setting up, but is less physical effort during the actual cleaning process compared to manual scrubbing with a brush. You can buy the SIBO Dew and Brushing Machine, or the considerably more expensive and better performing counter rotating brush machines. These take all the effort out of the brushing process. The expensive counter rotating brushing machines are also available to rent online. It's also a lot more expensive to wet clean. The machine cost, its running costs, and the relatively expensive cleaning formula cost much more than a brush, some dissolve, and some zorb, especially the cost per clean. You also need more storage space for a large bulky carpet cleaner. They're both a bit messy, but that's just the nature of the beast. The carpet cleaner drips water from the hose and can splash where you don't want it, and the micro sponges can flick up when you scrub and stick to the skirting boards and your feet. But a cloth cleans up drips, and you can just brush the micro sponges off when they're dry, so it's all fairly minor. The environmental impact of a carpet cleaner is also much greater. They're more power consuming, incredibly noisy, and use lots of water, completely avoidably. The detergents also add to environmental pollution. Micro sponges, in contrast, are naturally organic and fully biodegradable and compostable, and the solvents are non polluting. The other big problem with water based cleaning is the risk of damage and other consequences of using water on carpets. The long drying times create humid conditions in the pile and cause growth of bacteria, mould, mites and fungus, which is bad to health. Despite the wet cleaning process removing much of this, some comes back during drying. And the damage it can do to carpets is a real risk, as my rug showed, which is now permanently warped. Micro sponge chemistry, while harmless to us and the environment, is not friendly to these microbiological nasties, as scientific evidence shows. And perhaps most relevant of all is the actual cleaning performance. The top end commercial carpet cleaner, with the best cleaning formula available, simply didn't clean well, despite the large number of passes and cleaning sessions. It did a reasonable job, but left stains and smells behind. A few applications of Zorb and enough brushing fully removed everything and completely outperformed and outclassed the wet carpet cleaner method. 
This proves once and for all that the myth that Zorb and microsponges are only good as a carpet freshener is false, misleading propaganda and based on ignorance. Overall, water-based methods are a poor approach to carpet cleaning, as major companies have claimed for years, whether or not some people subjectively feel otherwise. Unfortunately, water-based cleaning products are still heavily marketed to people who aren't always in a position to know better. Hopefully this has helped you learn something about the good and bad fundamental approaches to cleaning, and help reveal the truth about water-based cleaning and the virtues of solvent-based dry cleaning. Until I tried it and used it correctly, I never believed how good it was. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.